Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to Save the Radio. This is James and this is the Daily Grind, bringing you bits and pieces of everything under the rising sun. Joining us in this program to tell us about the situation in Cebu City, a partner of Becca Music Ministries and Save Radio, Save Ministries in Cebu City. We have Mr. Adrian Dean. Good morning, sir. Good morning, James. How are you? I'm good. How are you, sir? I'm better than I deserve. I'm blessed. Thank you for asking. It's a pleasure and honor, and it's really a privilege to join you this morning. Thank you. Yeah. Um, sir, first question is, how did you come to know the Lord uh, as your personal Lord and Savior? Wow. Um, how much time do we have for this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I first came to know the Lord in the year 2000, and before knowing Christ, I was uh, operating a bar. I was in the nightlife, in the night scene. I was a hustler uh, in terms of trying to make as much money as I could because I wanted to help my family. Uh, but I took a different road. I took um, what I would say would be the wide path, which was a life of compromise. Uh, there was a time wherein, even in Cebu, I would permit uh, party drugs and all that kind of stuff. And we did all kinds of uh, lewd and and in my in my opinion um, uh, things that I wasn't really proud of in, in those days just to make the bar work and I was doing sales in the morning it was pretty much a life without God even if, if even if I knew that there was a God and and so I'd show up for church but I wasn't really in church I wasn't really born again but sometime in uh, December of of uh, of 2000, uh, I, I met an accident, a vehicular accident, and that was kind of like my road to Damascus. It was my uh, time of awakening where God literally took me out of the dark and brought me into his infinite light. And since then, I just stepped out of the, of the nightlife of the bar scene and shifted to where God really wanted me to be, uh, which is to be a corporate trainer, uh, a motivational speaker, and an inspirational writer. And if it were not for God pulling me out of the dark, I probably wouldn't be married to my wife. And I pr probably wouldn't be blessed to have my two sons today. Um, and so I'm, I'm very fortunate, James, that he chased after me because if he didn't, uh, I probably would be uh, lost in this, in this time. I probably wouldn't be doing the very, uh, the very thing that God wanted me to do for my life. Yeah, sir, so you mentioned that you are um, a writer and a speaker, right? Can you tell us about the topics that you talk about and then afterwards some, some um, books you've authored? Well, uh, not a book author yet. Uh, okay. Something that I'm praying for. Uh, but currently, I just write articles on, on Facebook about parenting. So I have an article called Daddy Diary. Um, and I also write articles on, on marriage, and it's called Husbandry 101. And the reason why I want to share this is because I have a passion for families. Um, and, and I feel that that is a unit and a part of society that is, is crumbling. And fatherhood is something that is oftentimes misinterpreted and, and, and defined wrongly. You know, we're always thought that we're just supposed to provide financially and materially, but it's more than that. You know, we're supposed to provide love, affection, mentoring, and coaching. And, you know, I feel as a father, that's, that's my call uh, in this season of my life uh, to raise these amazing sons. And I also write about marriage because um, it's, it's easy to get married, but it's hard to stay married, to be quite <laughs> honest. Um, you know, they say that the first five years, you're like love birds, but after 10 years of being married, you evolve into a different species of birds. You're now angry birds. <laughs> you know? And so, and so it's, it's tough, but it's a commitment and it's not just an emotion. It's something that you really have to, to work on every single day. And I think marriage and its sanctity is just the greatest way for us to really prove and demonstrate what unconditional love is. So it's, challenge and I felt that that was a space that people don't write about people oftentimes write about fashion and travel and food and I felt that God was calling me in that direction because it's it's an area where people's lives need to be touched right and especially at a time like this where you know everybody is just stuck at home and with their families 
And uh, sometimes there are families that, you know, there are a lot of disagreements whenever <laughs> they're together. There are a lot of arguments happen. And I, I appreciate that you're, you're doing this, that you're, you're spreading um, encouragement and positivity and um, inspiration to the families through social media. Thank you, James. Uh, just doing a small thing, just doing a little part in the big puzzle in the hopes that, you know, it will uh, encourage and inspire a lot of people. What you said is absolutely true uh, because we're in difficult times, um, you know, and we're locked down. We're not used to this kind of lifestyle. Uh, believe it or not, even if people say that they're enjoying being at home, the truth is there's a lot of tension at home. Uh, simply because there's a lot of worries, there's a lot of doubts because of the uncertainty that is ahead of us. But I always try to encourage my family and my friends that if there's one thing certain in this time, it is the fact that our Lord is still in the throne and he is still in control and he knows what's best for us. Right. And, you know, family is something that um, it's a sacred unit, right? It's something that... Um, at the end of the day, it's family that will be there for you. Yes, that's very true. But at the same time, it's also very possible, James, that it's the people closest to you who agitate you and sometimes frustrate you, to be quite honest. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very, it's a very um, important and delicate matter that we attend to our family. Sometimes we say that family is our priority, but when push comes to shove, sometimes we neglect our family. Sometimes we give our family the leftovers in terms of our time, our energy, uh, and our commitment, right? And so, and so given the fact that we're in lockdown, I think it's really a great opportunity for us uh, to strengthen our family ties, to pray together, uh, to have open conversations, and to also catch up on those times that we were so hooked with work because of busyness. Somebody once told me, James, that uh, quality time is quantity time. And uh, somebody also told me before that love is spelled as T-I-M-E. And what I realize, especially when it comes to raising children, is that, you know, our presence, the gifts, the toys, and all these things that we give them is, is, is really, really, you know, it, it pales in comparison to our presence. Um, they really want our time. And this is also a generation where, you know, a lot of young people, they have a lot of questions. Sometimes it affects their mental health. Um, and as you know, James, uh, this is a day and age where there is a pandemic out in the streets. But even in youth culture right now, there are many young people who are taking their own lives because they're mentally uh, imbalanced or, you know, they've, they've, they've gone through depression and all that. And parents are not even aware of that, right? So this is a time where families and parents in particular should be more intentional in reaching out to their children, getting to know them better, building relationships. And at the same time, James, uh, infusing those values because the truth is sometimes we learn foolishness in, in school uh, through our friends. Uh, and so this is the best time for families really to come together as well. Yeah, all right. Um, best time for families to um, bond and to understand each other more and um, at the same time really to walk closer to God as one family. Now moving on to our next topic, it's about um, how, how the quarantine is affecting every family in, in Cebu City. We're hearing in the news that um, um, cases are getting higher in your area. Can you tell us um, what's happening in, in Cebu City right now? Oh, that's absolutely true, James. About two months ago, uh, our numbers were very low. Uh, we were below 100. And today, um, you know, uh, today the, the numbers are just alarming. That is the word. In fact, uh, in the news, um, in many reports, uh, they are saying that Cebu could be the new epicenter of coronavirus in the country. And the reality here, James, is that we don't have enough resources. The reality is we don't have the kind of hospitals with the kind of size that can take in, you know, patients uh, like, you know, Metro Manila or Quezon City. We only have about seven or eight big hospitals here. We're understaffed. Uh, we're under-resourced. Uh, a lot of people right now are agitated because they want to go back to work because they want to provide for their families, but, you know, they can't. 
And, um, you know, because of that, because they feel that they're stuck at home, sometimes there's defiance and there's disobedience there. You know, some people, they middle around the streets, they go to places they're not supposed to go, and they're unaware that they can actually, uh, you know, contaminate and even infect other people uh, because, of, because of that lifestyle. So it's, it's a difficult time here in Cebu right now, but uh, praise God, you know, government has um, dispatched some leaders to come down to our city uh, to help out, um, to reinforce uh, the different needs around us. Right, sir, Cebu City being the business center, um, how is it affecting the economy right now? Well, James, uh, I'll be very honest. Uh, the economy in Cebu has been paralyzed. Uh, many of the business people have uh, retrenched. Uh, many have uh, shut down their operations. Uh, even some business people are saying that they may file for bankruptcy um, this year simply because there's no way to win. Uh, the priority really right now is, um, you know, to, to stay home and, and there's really not much of a choice. And the more people go out, uh, the more the numbers will continue to escalate. So uh, the reality here is that business is, business is very, very slow. Uh, people have to pivot and find a way um, to change the way they, they do business. Of course, the BPO sector is, is still alive in a way. Um, and other industries like pharmacies, uh, deliveries, um, those, those businesses are pretty much still alive, but um, most of the businesses in Cebu, James, are severely affected because of this pandemic. Right, and I'm sure, because I've, um, I've been to Cebu, and one thing I really love about your place is the food. <laughs> yes, oh yes. Oh yes, and um, everything sure. is more affordable, and the seafood is just so fresh. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> so I can just imagine all those restaurants that are closed um, right now because of that. All right. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, so, Actually, James, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, sadly, Cebu is known to be a place uh, for foodies. You know, a lot of people, they come here to eat. Uh, and you know for a fact that our beaches are 30 to 40 minutes away. Yeah. But uh, many of the restaurants here are, are shut down and closed. Uh, I've noticed that some of their stocks, they're reselling it in, you know, in supermarkets. And um, it's, it's just very sad. It's very difficult. Uh, but I also believe, James, with all my heart, that even if this is happening, God is still in control of the economy. I mean, he knows better than we do. And I do know for a fact that there will be a silver lining behind the dark clouds. Right. Sir, can you tell us how the uh, medical um, workers are, you know, affected right now how what's your situation wow um to be quite honest with you as mentioned earlier we're understaffed we have many nurses who are very exhausted physically and they're also mentally drained uh, we don't have enough nurses and doctors um, to support the demand of of patients and and the admissions every single day in in all the hospitals as a matter of fact I heard from many news reports that uh, Manila and the government, they're sending doctors to come to Cebu. Uh, but even these doctors are, are hesitant because, you know, there is no assurance of their own insurance. Uh, there's no guarantee where they will be staying, uh, how they're going to be protected. Um, there's a lot of question marks. And even our local frontliners, James, especially the nurses, because they're very, very drained. Many of them are on the verge of quitting right now and giving up because they're not sure if they can make it physically, financially. And at the same time, they know for a fact that their lives are threatened and they are the ones who are most susceptible to coronavirus. So um, a, lot of our, a lot of our health workers and frontliners are badly affected. Right. Um, sir, what is the situation of the churches and um, faith-based organizations um, in your area? Mm. Well, you know, for a fact, James, that in the midst of adversity, there will always be opportunity. And it's just amazing how even if the church literally has closed its doors on Sundays, 
it's actually wide open now. You know, God is still moving in, in the churches, not just in Cebu, not just in nationwide, but even worldwide. Uh, I was part of an international conference of Christian business leaders, and we discovered that the church is moving rapidly because of digitalization and online church. And you know what, James? It's amazing how God allows adversity to be a thing of beauty because in these difficult times, who do you turn to? Who do you run to, to be quite honest, right? More and more people are receptive to the gospel and they're receptive to the voice of God. And so churches right now are just, are just opening doors online. Many people People are getting saved. Many people are joining Bible studies and attending Sunday services. Uh, many people are expressing their commitment to the church. In other words, many people are running towards Christ, you know, and so these are unprecedented times, but these are also amazing times for the church because the reality is the church is not a building, James. It's actually a people. Right. And um, like, I, I believe that this is also the time that Everybody is looking for answers and everybody is just, you know, yearning for um, the, the answers to the questions that they have. And I think the best um, place to find that is really the Bible and through the, through the work of the churches, um, our spirits are lifted, morale is boosted. And, um, That's right. Yeah. That's tough, right. Right. A tough time happening right now in Cebu and we all know that uh, best way we can do is to pray for everybody, pray for the government um, um, working there in the frontliners and everybody else. Sir Adrian, what is your encouragement to all the families in uh, Cebu City who's very affected right now? Well, you know, James, it goes without saying that it's, it's very difficult. Life is very difficult and we have a choice. You know, some people say it's either you, you, you try to survive or you thrive. Um, some people say we've got to stay positive, but you know, being positive is just not acknowledging the fact that these are difficult and dark times. I dare say that it's important for us to be optimistic. Uh, optimistic is recognizing that yes, these are difficult times, but there's always a light at the end of the tunnel and the light is Jesus. And so my encouragement for all families is, we really, really need to stick together. Um, we need to make sure that in our families, in our homes, we're praying, we're discipling our children, we're loving our wives, we're taking good care of our family's spiritual needs because out of the overflow of our spiritual health uh, will be relationships in our homes. But I also believe that we as Sabanos, we also need to be obedient and submissive to authority. Uh, you know, the Bible tells us, James, that every time the Israelites were complaining against Moses, the truth is they were filing a complaint against God. And so we have a tendency to have what we call the virus of complainitis, where we're just complaining and ranting all the time, James, but we have no idea that it doesn't really help. You know, it doesn't really solve anything. And our government leaders are doing their very best to try to solve a problem they've never faced before. Uh, and many times we, as Cebuanos, we, we compare ourselves with other highly industrialized and you know, very, very successful countries like Singapore or the United States. But the reality is they themselves are struggling and suffering even greater than we are. So I guess my encouragement for us is to be submissive to authority, to be obedient, uh, to take care of our families, uh, to be innovative also in these difficult times, to ask God for a download from heaven for wisdom uh, on how to you know, make that shift in our careers or to pivot in our businesses. And at the same time, to be a faithful follower of Jesus, because the reality is there will be storms in our lives and we're never going to be free from any of these storms, but we are assured that we can be storm proof when we have Christ in the center of our lives. Right. Um, sir, can you share to us once again, where they can read your encouraging articles on family and marriage? Oh, <laughs> I'm just in Facebook. Um, you, you can just look for me. I'm, 
I'm Adrian Ding. I'm just, uh, you know, a guy who just uh, loves the family, loves the Lord, and loves to serve people. So you can find me there. Uh, I'm also a trainer and a speaker. Uh, but what I really, really desire is, is to make sure that the life that I have right now is a life well lived for God's glory and God's purposes. And you know what, James, we only have a short span in our lives, you know, and eternity is just, eternity is far reaching. And so what I realize is that in that short amount of time that God has given us, we need to do whatever it takes to live it out purposefully, meaningfully, and passionately, so that one day when we come face to face with a Savior, He will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. So that's my hope for everyone out there. Uh, whatever your profession is, whether you're a DJ, whether you're a business owner, whether you're a nurse or a doctor, an insurance broker, a real estate agent, the life that we have is so short, but eternity is forever. It's perpetual. Let's make our lives count. Right. So, Adrian, thank you very much for everything you've shared to us. Before I let you go, I have two fast talk questions for you. Okay. All right. Your top three favorite Christian music right now? Top three? Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I'm listening to Torin Wells right wow. now. Uh, I'm also going back old school to Don Moen <laughs> and uh, pretty much just hymns uh, because I, I want to make sure that the songs that we sing are very biblical. <laughs> right. Also, sir, um, what is your greatest dream? Whoa. <laughs> Too many to mention, uh, too many to mention, James, but I guess my greatest dream is to live a life that is really pleasing to God, um, to make sure that my family is loved, uh, cared for, and that I leave a legacy uh, behind for everyone. But, but I think my mission in life is to point people to God and to make an impact in their lives through what I do. Right. All right. Check out the articles and um, everything else about Sir Adrian Ding on his Facebook page and be encouraged about um, with your family and with um, your marriage, if you guys are married. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sir Adrian, for joining us this morning. I learned so many things. Thank you very much as well, James. And uh, there's another page that I also have. It's, uh, it's my business page. And this is where I post ideas on Anything that's people development related, mm -hmm. uh, such as leadership, uh, branding, service, customer service, communications, and all that. It's also Adrian Ding, but it's my business page. Uh, people can also check it out. And aside from that, um, we also have two businesses. It's called Maximum Impact Philippines. And what we do is we offer life-changing training programs for companies from SMEs to mega corporations with a biblical perspective. And at the moment, James, what's keeping me also engaged is I'm also reaching the youth. We have a school called the Academy for Extraordinary Teens, where we help teenagers become the best version of themselves uh, through a personal development program. So we're doing all these different initiatives because we really wanna make a difference in the lives of people. And we believe that it starts within us. Change really begins within us with Christ beside you, behind you, and before you. Yeah, and I'm sure it's something that's very timely right now because I know everybody just wants to recover from this. Corporations have to um, get back up their feet. And especially the youth right now, so many troubling thoughts running in their heads for sure. So Adrian, once again, thank you very much for joining us um, in this program. Hey everybody, this is James of The Daily Grind with Mr. Adrian being telling us about the situation of the families affected and of the situation of the pandemic in Cebu City. Um, yeah, that was it. This is Saved Radio. Taking back the airwaves for Jesus. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, James. God bless you. Have a great day. You too.